Dallas Cowboys Game Night is presented by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. After a trip to FedEx Field, the Cowboys come away 2-0 on the season. Everybody questioned if they could keep that same energy from week one, and they showed by putting up 31 points that they absolutely could. Welcome to Cowboys game night. I've got Nate Newton with me. You remember Nate from the good old days. Yes. I'm Lindsey Draper, yes. and we are outside at Ford Center. There was an amazing watch party here. All kinds of fans out here earlier as the Cowboys went 2-0, and oh, Nate. Were you surprised that they were able to get it done after their slow start? I knew it would be hard going into Washington with a better defense. And uh, they, they in the first half, it was kind of shaky, but they pulled it together. All right, we are going to get right into some interviews here on Cowboys game night. First up, we're going to hear from Byron Jones, who is with Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. The Cowboys are 2-0 in the East, and uh, Byron Jones, the Cowboys cornerback, back in the starting lineup for the uh, Pro Bowler, and, and, and we thought uh, an important part of the win today. Um, the, there were plays early in the game that were big. They, they came right at you right away, tested you. You said, yes, I'm here. I see. I knocked <laughs> the ball down. Thank you. And then there was another big play, I thought, uh, a tackle that's, that uh, denied. In fact, the, the one that denied them the touchdown before they scored ate up a lot of important time off the clock. So how, how do you feel about how you played? I felt pretty good. I felt healthy. That's, that's the best part. Um, yeah, great start. I wish I finished a little bit better. I wish our defense finished a little bit better. Um, but we're still working. We're still growing. And I, I made the point late in the game, I wasn't sure you had established your defensive identity yet the way you want to. Do you agree with that? And if so, why? Yeah, we're still working to finishing on finishing the games. Um, there's been points in the game where we have an opportunity to really close it out. And we're not doing that at this point. So um, it's still early, but um, a defense where we have a lot of plays under our belt, you want to see that start to click soon. And Byron, obviously you missed training camp and getting yourself healthy. Yeah. Uh, are you there yet, or are you still kind of finding your way through things a little no, bit? I feel 100 percent. No, no, certainly, I wouldn't. Technique go out wise, there. though, technique. Yeah, and everything. I wouldn't go out there if I didn't feel solid. So um, you know, there's always room for improvement, even if I was a part of OTAs and a part of camp. But um, no, I feel good. The one thing that's really improved, at least through the first two games, last year you guys struggled on third down. Mm -hmm. I believe 29th in the NFL. Wow. First two weeks have been outstanding. I think Giants two of 11 today two of nine for Washington. So any re reason you can pinpoint as to why the third down defense has been so good? Um, guys just playing hard. Guys understanding the call, um, understanding where your help is. Uh, guys are rushing. There's not one thing that's going to uh, dictate why we're good at third downs, but it's a collection of a lot of individuals stepping up to the plate and you know, taking care of their responsibilities. When you get to 31-14, you kind of know what's coming. You know how they're going to play. <laughs> and and, and in, in the league, I don't know how you guys play defense at all sometimes. It's almost like, okay, they're going to score. How, how long can you keep them from scoring? How, what do you tell yourself in that situation? How hard is it to play defense when it's like? Well, for us, we just got to understand is, you know, we're going to be a little bit softer, but when they throw the ball down and underneath coverage, we got to tackle one-on-one uh, -on -one in space. And I don't think we're doing a good enough job at that at this point, but um, that's the beauty of the opportunity going into the next game. We have a three, four days to work on that. So and has to, to get right. Excuse me. Has to feel good to get off to this 2-0 start. How important is it that you guys are sitting here now at 2-0? The rest of the world will say with Miami coming in to AT&T Stadium, but I know you guys will have to treat them like they were a real <laughs> NFL team. <laughs> oh, yeah, no question. And, um, you know, it's always great to collect win wins early. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it's a long season. And, um, you know, some of the best teams are the ones who can finish late in the season. So that's what we're trying to be. All right, you look like Byron Jones today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. All right, Lindsay, Appreciate back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Uh, we'll catch up more with them later. But, Nate, what was uh, Byron Jones' second game getting back into the mix like? He looked good. He played well. I think that it was a perfect pass for them to have that score on him. But, you know, he said something that was so important. They are 2-9 and nine on third downs because of a lot of things. Of not knowing their defensive backfield scheme, understanding it, breaking on plays, good pass rush, solid run defense. It's a, many, uh, it's a plethora of things that are helping them get off the field on third downs. All right, we're going to take a break here from Cowboys game night. We still have more to come, including Jason Witten later in the show. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back right after this.
This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. Welcome back into Cowboys game night. Injury scare with Antoine Woods, who plays on the defensive line for the Cowboys, and Christian Covington stepped in. We'll hear more from him in a moment, Nate. But you were telling me that this is a guy, the Cowboys have been pretty lucky with injuries. You hope he's not the first big one. Hey, yeah, 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 Antoine Woods, the human log, I call him. He's a great player. He gives us 30 to 35 players, but where he plays, but where he's most devastating at is in the run game. He secures that. He makes it where Leighton Van Der Esch and, uh, and Jalen Smith can run downfield, run downhill and make tackles. Well, he obviously pay, played well enough to get in the postgame interviews with Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. Let's go out to FedEx Field and hear more. Lindsay, thank you. Uh, we thought it was time for everybody to meet Cowboys defensive tackle Christian Covington. He played an awful lot today with uh, Antoine Woods going out in the in the second quarter. So you'd been a starter in Houston and came here. Ostensibly, you're going to increase the depth, but because you're a veteran, you know what what can happen. Absolutely. Are you always prepared for a situation like that? First of all. Oh, you have to be. This game. It can uh, take a toll on a lot of people, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, and you know, with with this being said, you know, it happened a lot when I was during my time in Houston. You know, you, in this league, you have to have that next man up mentality. So, you know, I'm preparing every, every I'm preparing every week like I'm you know gonna be playing every single snap. But at the same time, you know, we we're wishing uh, Antoine the best of luck. You know, he's gonna be back. He's gonna be back real soon. So, but in the meantime, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can. And you must absolutely love the state of Texas because you go from Rice to Houston to Dallas. I mean, what's next? Oh, y'all can't get rid of me. You <laughs> I don't know. If you play like you did today, they don't want to. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how, how much, uh, you know, you just kind of, you just drive. Everybody else has to pack up, get the movers. Honestly, no, it's been, it's truly been a blessing. You know, yeah. Texas is, you know, to come, I never, first of all, I never thought I'd ever end up in the state of Texas coming from Canada. And to, you know, be here as long as I've had, I've had, you know, I've been here for about nine years now total. It's been, uh, it's been crazy to see how fast time has truly been flying by. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for world. It's been an amazing experience. I hope to continue, you know, being here as long as I can. And, and your defensive line coach, Rod Marinelli, he can tend to raise his voice from time to time, use a little bit of foul language. <laughs> uh, was it a little eye opener when you got in here? So, whoa, this is a little different. A little bit, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's 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 the NFL, and it's obviously it's the uh, it's the Cowboys' way. You know, they expect you know you to do execute your job at the highest uh, at the highest level, and they expect it to be done every single play, every single snap. So, you know, you you can appreciate a, uh, a coach who has that passion, who yeah. wants. To, you know his players to do their absolute best every single time they're out on that field. Why was Dallas a good fit for you when uh, Houston didn't keep you, or you decided not to stay there? You know, uh, I've been a I've been a four three defensive lineman, you know, my entire career. You know, going back all the way to high school. So this has been uh, to, for me to be able to be given an opportunity to suit up for the you know the, the Cowboys. This has been a tr truly been a blessing, and to be able to you know be back in the system that I know I can play. You know, a get off like up vertical upfield defense that I know I can thrive in. You know, this has been a uh, been a dream come true. And you talk about playing for the Cowboys. Does this just feel a little bit different? I know you had an NFL team, obviously in Houston, but just the the amount of attention this football team gets. Oh, it's night and day. Yeah, it's night and day at the end of the day. And uh, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's, great. it's just it's, who doesn't want to be a Cowboy? Who doesn't grow up wanting to be a Cowboy? So I, <laughs> I know my mom was proud when I was able to sign here. Every, my family was proud, and yeah. you know, it's been uh, it's been an amazing experience ever since. Great. Appreciate the time. Good Christian, job today, you. Uh, you. Cowboys thank Nation. You. Meet Christian Covington. Thanks, Lindsay, back to you. Thanks, guys. More to come from FedEx Field. Still hoping, though, Nate, that the Cowboys defense can get into a rhythm when they move into week three. I hope so, too. And Kristen Covington is a guy we got on the, te the Texans roster. He's a veteran guy. He adds a little bit of uh, pass rush to his run-stopping abilities. And like you say, with, with the Antoine Woods out, that puts a lot of pressure on Kristen Covington, moving Tyron Crawford down, giving him more snaps. Uh, uh, Kerry Hyder, giving him more snaps on the inside. We don't know the extent of what uh, uh, the injury to Antoine was, but we know that uh, he will be missed. All right, coming up next on Cowboys game night, he needs three touchdowns to tie, four to break the record for most ever by a Dallas Cowboy. Jason Witten joins us from FedEx Field next. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. This segment is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Continuing here on Cowboys game night from Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Let's hear now from Jason Witten with a touchdown in both games so far through two weeks of the season. 
Lindsey, thank you. The goat keeps uh, racking up the uh, the cans uh, of touchdowns. Now he's a touchdown machine. <laughs> and pe people said, well, how will Jason Witten help him coming back? Uh, you know, we said, well, third down and the red zone will help right away there. So um, is anything different? I mean, is anything different for you right now? No, I mean, I just think there's a lot of excitement that I have, you know. I mean, uh, certainly I expected, and, you know, I'm not exceeding my expectations. I had high expectations. I think the coaching staff had high expectations for me, and, you know, it's good to see it pay off. I mean, we still got a lot to clean up, but, you know, to get 2-0, and oh, it was ugly there in the, at the early start, but we dug ourselves out and just playing at a high level. You know, I think this offense, I mean, certainly starts with the quarterback, how well he's playing, but I feel good, you know, be able to make some plays, convert some third downs, make a couple blocks. It's a good offense with a lot of weapons. I'm excited to be a part of it. And you had a big conversion on third down on an in route, believe made 17. And I said to Brad, do you think there's any part of Witten that says right now, gosh, I wish I was still in the booth. He said no. He said no, but I'm going to let you answer for yourself. I think it's a heck no. You know, <laughs> yeah. well, I know the heck part is yeah, 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 than that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I just, I, I think just the, I have so much joy out there playing, yeah. you know, and it's a great group of guys. And I, I think, you know, both games starting down 7-0 against division opponents mm -hmm. and to see our offense come back to score 30 in both of those games, uh, I, I just say that we at, we're attacking, you know, and we're going to get our running game going. Certainly hasn't been up to our expectations, but I think just the weapons that we have, I mean, Dak's playing at such a high tier, you know, yeah. with the level and confidence that he has. So Kellen's calling good games and lines protecting. You know, the biggest thing I've noticed is just that defense. I mean, they're getting big stops for us and um, that's showing up for us. The, at one point before that 17-yarder, you were three for seven with a <laughs> touchdown. Uh, but but it was all in important close spaces. Is there anything about the whatever the changes are in the offense that the way you're being used on third down and in the red zone that kind of plays into your skill set? Well, I think it's just it's opening up. You know, I mean, Kellen's attacking a lot of different ways. I think it helps when you got uh, Gallup had over 100 yards. Certainly, Cooper's a, a top-tier wide receiver. Uh, Cobb's been a nice addition for us, you know. I mean, all the little bubble screens. He's tough to tackle, you know. And and uh, you lose a guy like Beasley, and then add this player, you know. It's just uh, you know, give credit to Steven and Will and Jerry for for adding a playmaker like that. So um, it's coming up different ways, you know. I mean, we haven't really been in those two-minute situations where sometimes you get some of those catches. But I'm just happy to be a part of it, you know. And my number's called, and I expect to make some plays. And Jason, strange game in the sense that you guys really only had seven possessions in this football yeah. game, the last one being a kneel down, yeah. but you scored on the last five. So both both games, you fell behind, then five straight scoring drives. So what's happening on that huddle that it suddenly clicks? Yeah, I, I think just, you know, I, I, I think it represents our head coach really well. You know, he's always talking about the game's not always going to go perfect. you got to be able to handle that adversity. And so, yeah, we got we got to dig ourselves out earlier. We can't set ourselves back like that with three and outs, but then to respond the way we have. Um, and I just point to good play calls by Kellen, good feel, everybody staying calm and collected in there, and then the quarterback just making some huge plays. Yeah. Old man's not done yet. <laughs> Lindsay, back to you. Thanks, guys. We will catch up with you right after this. Uh, Nate, it's great to see. I know the big worry this offseason was using Jason Witten. Will it be too much? Will it be not enough? What will it look like? Looks like they found the sweet spot. And the sweet spot always going to be that red zone for Jason. Once you get him close to that, he's going to run the proper routes, get the, the right separation with him and a Blake Jar making that move, that, that straight up and crossing over. Hey, he's going to catch that rock. End zone is what he do. All right. When we come back, Brad and Babe are bringing us a player who's got a huge smile on his face. I know it because his first catch with the Cowboys was a touchdown. Devin Smith is up after this. This segment was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome back to Cowboys game night here from the star in Frisco. Big night for Devin Smith. He was the fifth receiver that they carried to this game and yet still had a touchdown. Here he is with Brad Sham and Babe Loffenberg. Lindsay, thank you. There are a lot of great stories on this Cowboys team. And, and here's one of what I think is the absolute best. Devin Smith, uh, a very high pick by the New York Jets in 2015, overcame two terrible knee injuries and and uh, I don't remember if it was the touchdown or uh, I, mean, I think it was the touchdown where I said Devin Smith you're all the way back do you feel mm -hmm. all the way back yeah it feels great um, just everything that I've been through and to be able to have this moment especially with my teammates man, it means a lot as Brad said high second round pick of the Jets a couple of knee injuries out of football last year 
How special was that to come back today? You didn't just beat anybody at corner. You beat Josh Norman for the post and the yeah. touchdown. Um, it, it was very special. Um, I think the, the the most fun part about it was just how all my teammates embraced me after I came to the sideline. And um, they all were telling me that I deserve it and, and just things of that magnitude. And so to hear your teammates, you know, say stuff like that, it, it means a lot, especially with everything I've been through. But I mean, it's not your first rodeo. You've had that before. Why, why is this so special? Um, I mean, obviously just because of the injuries and stuff. And, um, you know, it was moments, uh, you know, when I was going through that injury where I thought that, you know, football was going to be done for me. Um, and so when I got the opportunity to come here and, and be a part of this team, you know, I just tried to take advantage of every opportunity that I was given. And Devin, the post that you caught for a touchdown, you knew you would beat Norman at one point. You don't know the ball's coming to you. And then the ball, you know, the ball's in the air a long time. People don't understand. Yeah. But you got a lot of time to think about yeah, it. So absolutely. walk me through when, when you know you had him beat and then you see the ball coming out of Dak's hand. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just coming off the line, I, uh, you know, he came, gave me a clear path to just, just run. And so that was just um, the whole mission was to just run and just get past him. And so I was able to do that. And uh, Dak looked back and then threw the ball, put it on the money. Well, it looks like you got some depth at the in the wide receiver room right now. What's it like in that room with so many talented guys and and you you know everybody can't play and catch at, at, all at once. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, we we have talent um, just throughout that room. So whoever's out there is going to make a play. And and uh, just like Amari said last week, you know, everybody on this receiver uh, squad can make a play at any moment. And so um, you know, it's, it's scary for defenses. And how much does this do for your confidence? I know you, with the injuries and sitting out last year, you, you got to have some doubt in your mind. Uh, well, I think the doubt was was gone after I got a chance to be a part of this team, and I didn't really think about anything negative. I was just trying to just stay positive every single day mm -hmm. um, and just worry about the task at hand, and that was just to get better. All right, everybody is excited to see you doing what you can do, and uh, it's uh, we're happy for you. It's a great story. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Devin Smith, Lindsay, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes, a big part of the Cowboys' win today as they move 2-0 and on the division. Nate and I will take a look ahead and wrap up this evening's show for you right here on Cowboys Game Night right after this. Dallas Cowboys Game Night was presented by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Reliant, an NRG company. U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Choose VA today. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. All right, Nate, we're the last show of the day. Week two has wrapped up. How do you feel looking at week three, four, five, and six here? You know what, the Miami game, we should just go out and play smart, play hard, and just wipe these guys out. The New Orleans Saints, that's going to be a night game. The Voodoo Dolls are going to be shaking, and their curse is going to be baking. That is going to be a super game. Well, Drew Brees hurt his hand today, so we'll have to wait and see how serious that ends up being. Yeah, but you know what? I don't think Aaron Rodgers hurt his hand. Green Bay is ready. They got a young, nice defense. Green Bay is Green Bay. <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you feel, though, with the Cowboys coming back home? Think they'll settle in a little bit more? Even though it's a noon game, I know Brian brought us with us earlier said you can't. What do you say? Eat the cheese? Eat the cheese. Uh, the young lady, well, it's a strange game. NFL's a strange It don't matter. Lady. Some games you just beat because you're better. And, and by the way, Mika Fitzpatrick, when you yell, but the Packers <laughs> leave, I mean, when you <laughs> If they leave, <laughs> drop Mika Fitzpatrick. Stay here. Off. Yeah. You are hooked on Mika Fitzpatrick. That's right. We want to send a thanks out to Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg for our interviews. Nate Newton, always fun with your big man. Lindsey Draper, we will see you all next week after the Miami game on Cowboys Game Night.